everyone. Kia ora koutou. Uh, today I'm just going to give a brief presentation on um, some collaborative uh, frameworks for pest management that have been involved in, in New Zealand. <coughs> As we know, IG11 isn't only about size or number of protected areas, but it also requires areas to be effectively and equitably managed and ecologically representative. In New Zealand and in many other countries, as we've seen, invasive species are the greatest threat to protected areas. And they also significantly affect primary production, recreation, and other values. Successfully managing these species requires new tools, but also a collaborative approach, as um, we're also seeing. And I'm going to briefly cover two examples of recent collaboration. Um, a regulatory approach for aquatic weed control and a voluntary strategy for controlling wilding conifer trees. Turning now to aquatic weeds, they're very difficult to control, the access issues difficult to get to, they regrow from the slightest part or fragment. There are effective herbicides available, but um, in New Zealand until recently the use of these such as um, haloxifop and metsulfuron was prohibited by the Environmental Protection Agency onto water. So you could use for terrestrial plants but not around or onto water. This was proving a problem for local councils in particular. So they established the beginnings of a network, an applicant group, um, to basically reassess the legal controls and apply for a new approval. Along the way, um, industry, researchers and government departments saw the need and joined in. The advantages um, were that it's a very expensive technical process and the group was able to share the costs and also share its varying skills, both technical and management. A spin-off effect has been that, that the ongoing monitoring which is required by the new approval is coordinated nationally amongst the group. So this new approval significantly broadens the options for use um, of herbicides to attack these particular aquatic plants. So it basically is broadening the toolbox. Turning now to wilding conifers. These are a serious invasive species, um, such species as radiata and lodgepole pines and Douglas fir. They affect over a million hectares in New Zealand. Their effect is to change ecosystems and reduce grazing land. However, they are also highly valued for forestry, erosion control and recreation, and that's how these plants uh, came to be in New Zealand to start with. In 2011, a management group was established which had its core in an oversight group for some research that was going to be um, taking place. And like the other example, this group grew local and national government um, joined up, and more significantly, industry organisations such as the Forest Owners Association and Federated Farmers, who traditionally would be the most um, strident proponents for having these trees around. The strategy aims to prevent spread <coughs> and to contain or eradicate wilding conifers by 2030, so it's quite ambitious. But I think one of the strengths of the strategy is that it includes four objectives as to process rather than outcome. And one of these is that the partners recognise individual and collective responsibilities. So in practice that means that they think about who is best placed to undertake what task, be it leadership at a national level, um, control and awareness uh, raising by industry, and by not uh, duplicating tasks and everybody having a role makes the strategy effective. To conclude, fr from these experiences, a couple of tips for, for collaboration at the strategy or policy or legal uh, level. Build on any existing networks and relationships that you have. The knowledge and trust that's already there, maybe as, as a seed or from other areas, really counts when it comes to dealing with uncertainty in new processes. And that experience and working together it means that you can be more efficient. Consider using an independent coordinator or project manager, <coughs> which was done for the, for the legal application that we had. It helps to keep things moving when the project partners are basically 
um, all involved in other areas and have pressures from their everyday jobs. And it also provides a degree of overview and objectivity. And finally, um, I found just to suspend judgment that groups that, that appear to have different goals, conflicting goals, um, and that normally maybe would not talk to each other, um, can actually still work effectively together if the situation is right and they can see uh, benefits in it for them. So I think, to sum up, that if invasive species are the greatest threat to protected areas, our ability to collaborate and innovate and learn from each other is our greatest asset. Thank you.